Welcome to the future of spelling. This is Sir Link a lot, as he likes to link a lot. He also looks remarkably like me, which is no coincidence. Linking is a fun and easy way to remember things by trying to find a connection, and it is really good for spelling. It is ridiculously good for spelling. It is off the charts how good it is for spelling. But before we go any further, I've got some shout outs from the previous lesson. Some nice, um, some nice uh, emails come in, some um, social media communications, Facebook and the like, from various children. Some great links. The first one is from a girl called Isabel, eight years old. This is really good for the spelling of the longest river in America is the Mississippi. And also, it's a state of America, Mississippi, and the capital of that state is Jackson. Uptown funk, Jackson, Mississippi. An old classic is Mrs. M, Mrs. I, Mrs. S, S, I, Mrs. S, S, I, Mrs. P, P, I which is great, not my link, somebody else's, genius. My one is, the teacher, Miss is sipping some water from the Mississippi River. Miss is sipping, Miss is sipping, knock off the NG, Mississippi. Her one is, two sets of silly sausages saw two peas in a pod with four eyes between them. Two sets of silly sausages, <laughs> double S, double S, Two peas in a pod, two peas, and four eyes between them. One, two, three, four. Four letter eyes. Genius. Very clever. Isabel, you are a linker. A definite linker. You get one of these. And, stop, a badge and a pencil. And you get a two finger ripple. Nice work, Isabel. Nice work. The next one up is from a boy called Davy and another boy called JJ. 12 and 11 year old. 11 years old, respectively. Who saw the word minute... If you do a minute change to the word minute, a minute change, M-I-N-U-T-E, change the T and the E, you get minuet, which is a dance. Minute, minute, that's called a homonym, we'll come back to that. Do a minute change to minute, you get minuet. Good work, boys. Nice work, lads, a badge and pencil, two of each, on their merry way. The last one is from a girl called Emily, 10 years old, for the spelling of convenience. Not an easy word. She spotted... Uh, the uh, well, she thought of this. A con man, con man, in Venice went from east to north, from east to north in Venice. A con man, Venice, e n east north inside Venice. If you write it down, you'll see it. Very clever. A two finger ripple and one of these, and obviously of oh, a badge and a pencil. Excellent work. Keep those coming. Keep those links coming. Send in a video if you want. In a video or uh, say any messages or you want to get any questions to ask me. Send me your links, what do you want, what do you want links, go for it. We're all one big fa happy family thinking of links. So, the lesson today is homophones. These are words that sound the same but are spelt differently. Homo is same, phone is sound. Same sound, like phone, telephone, same sound. Homonyms, like minute and minute, same spelling, homonym, homo name, but different pronunciation. Homophones are very difficult. For example, pair, pair, and pair. I mean, what do you do with pair, pair, and pair? It's a nightmare with pair, pair, and pair. You look at it and think, well, which one do I choose? Predictive text, I don't know which one do I do? What do I do? Really tricky. But not anymore, because Sir Lincoln is here to save the day. The first one up is there and there. This is so exciting. It's so exciting. Although they are that they are contraction. We'll do that one in a future lesson. That's another section. There and there. So tricky, but not anymore. This is one of my top three favorite links, and it's not my link. I didn't think of it. It was linked by a dyslexia specialist many, many years ago. She thought of it. Give her a two-finger ripple on one of these. Um, but I added a bit to it at the end, which is quite catchy at the end. Start to get very excited. This is so exciting. It's so exciting, it's so exciting, I'm going to be very excited, I'm going to explode, I'm going to go to the leap before I explode, go to the leap before I explode, quick, go to the leap, There and there. The I is a person, the R is a signpost, their possession, their direction. He helps her to get here and there, he helps her to get here and there. 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 Oh, we love that one. So good. Also, there, the first word, T-H-E-I-R, 
The word heir is in there, difficult word, the heir to the throne, like the queen, Prince Charles is the heir to the throne, the next one in charge. When she dies, he inherits riches. He inherits riches. The heir to the throne is inside the word there, knock off the T. There it is. Is it in? You know it is. I love that one, and a lot of people do. Children, teachers, parents, it's such a good one there and there. Oh, I'm so excited about that, so excited. But it wasn't mine initially. Uh, it was actually a dyslexic uh, specialist teacher told me this one about the I, the R. That was her trick, and I just finished it off with he. Helps her to get here and there. Marvellous, marvellous. The next word up is, our next two words up are practice and practice. Practice the noun has got a C. Practice the verb has got an S. Practice has got a C, the noun, and the verb has got an S. Difficult. Have a look. Let's put you on the clock here. Have a look at these words. There are two small words inside these words near the end. There's a, a three-letter word and a two-letter word. A three-letter word and a two-letter word near the end. So he's doing his football practice. Doing is the doing word. So football practice is the noun. Uh, he's practicing his piano, practicing his piano, that's the verb, because I-N-G. Different spellings at the end. Very difficult. So, let's put you on the clock. Here we go. Did you see them both? Let's find out. Practice and practice. The second last letter of the noun practice is a C, and in the verb, it's an S. The noun ice is in the noun, and the verb is is in the verb. There's a noun in the noun, ice, and there's a verb in the verb, is. Good one. We love it. I mean, to ice something can be a verb, but it's pretty rare. If you know it is is there, that's the verb, therefore ice, ice has to be the noun. There are many others for actually practice and practice, I've heard before, um, like C before S in the alphabet, M before V for verb, but there are many others. Let me know if you've got a good one, and if it's really good, you may get a badge, like this one. Do you believe it, or is it a big fat lie? Lie inside the word believe, or this one. There's a cup and the biscuit. The C is the hand, the U is the cup. So let me know on Facebook or Twitter if you've got a good link, or you like something linked. Um, or uh, or you any questions for myself or uh, Lady Lexicographer for the origin of words? Uh, let us know on our on the Facebook side, so or Twitter. Anyway, so the next one up, the next ones are loose and lose. They're not homophones. They're not exactly the same sound, but they're pretty close. So to me, that's good enough. Loose and lose. I see so often. We're losing the game, L-O-O-S-I-N-G. That's a big fat no, it's a no-no. So, loose and lose, the difference. If you lose something, if you lose it and loosen it, or lose the game. Over to the link. Loose and lose. If one of the O's in loose becomes loose, you lose an O and you lose. Lose an O, there you go. A rhyme, we love it. <laughs> anyway, uh, that's my one, hope you like that one. Someone else told me this one, which is good, I think. It's maybe better than mine, actually, I think. Um, yeah, this person said, there are five letters in loose and four in loose. So lose, you do lose, because there's four letters in you. And lose has got five. So lose, you do lose. Hi. Great. We love it. Either one. If not, think of your own. The next one up is, or are, I keep saying that throughout this whole lesson. I keep getting that in wrong. The next, next ones up are stationary. And stationary. So stationary with an A is something that's not moving. How good was that? How statuesque was that? Or stationary with an E is like pencils, pens, envelopes or envelopes. All right, take your choice, take your choice. Not easy, difficult. Let's go over 
to the link. Stationary, meaning to be still, and stationary, which are writing materials, for example, envelope or envelope, pens and letters, that all contain an E. Stationary has two A's, and stationary, unsurprisingly, has the word stationer in it. If your toy is stationary, then you need to buy some more AA batteries from the stationer, as they don't just sell stationery these days. No, no, no. Stationery, if your AA batteries aren't working. Or a stationer sells stationery. Simple, simple, simples. Is it in? You know. Next one up. Three of them. Three for the price of one. Poor, poor and poor. Poor, poor and poor. There's actually a fourth. P-O-R-E. It's a pretty rare word. Pause. It's where it comes out of your pause. I haven't done that one. I'll do one, that, uh, do one for that separately. But for now, the three high frequency ones are poor, P-A-W, P-O-O-R, poor eyesight, and then P-O-U-R to pour a drink. Poor, poor and poor. In fact, let's give you a quick go here. This will be difficult to do in five seconds. If you want to, you can pause me. Pause me. You've got five seconds. You even think of a link for like the poor, the U of poor. Or P-A-W for poor there. What could that be? The A and the W or P-O-O-R, poor. Have a think for five seconds and pause me. You may need a bit longer. Give it a go. We're going to start. That clock. How did you do? Pause the pausey, if you need more time. Poor, poor and poor. Poor has a poor at the end. The two O's of poor are a pair of glasses. And the U of poor is a glass. My dog used a paw to pour himself a drink of water, but failed miserably due to his poor eyesight. Poor, poor and poor. Now, some parts of the country, they pronounce P-O-O-R as poor. Like if you go through a wee, you're a weir. If you have a poo, you're a poor. So it's poor, poor, poor. So it's not quite a homophone, but close enough. Uh, there are three quadruple homophones out there. Poor, poor, poor and poor, depending on what part of the country. Right, right, right and right. And uh, or, or, or and or. I don't allow abbreviations or plurals or uh, contractions like um, they are there. No, there's only three classic quadruple homophones. Anyway, moving on to affect and effect. Affect with an A is the verb, and effect E is the noun. Now, you can occasionally have the other way around, but it's very rare. This is a good link. It's also using uh, a technique we use in the lesson six, which is uh, an acrostic in a way. Very handy, this one. We love this link. It's not mine. It is genius. It is superb. Brace yourselves for a superb link. Affect and effect. The verb affect begins with an A and the noun effect begins with an E. Just remember the word raven. Remember, affect, verb, effect, noun. Oh, that was dreadful. Dreadful. <laughs> so it's rubbish. It was so bad. Raven, remember. Affect, verb, effect, noun. Raven. That is an acrostic, the first letter of each word, helping you with affect and effect. Not quite the homophone affect and effect, of course, but it's pretty close. And it's, uh, to me, it gets in this section of homophones. Nearest down it. The next one, and the last one today, is principle and principal. Principal. P A L is the person in charge, like the head teacher is the principal or the principal point, the main thing. And principal, P-L-E, is the, 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 uh, the ethic behind something, the principle of the matter, it's the, uh, the, the reasoning behind it. There's a difference. 
So, in fact, let's quickly test you. You never know. You've got a chance. You've got a chance to put you on the clock. See if you can think of a link here. And if you haven't got time, pause me. Put five seconds. That's probably not long enough for you, but give it a pausey, pausey. We love a pause. We love a pause. So, try and look. Think of something at the end of each word. Part something there may help you. Something, 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 something. <laughs> Maybe not. Let's start that clock. If you want more time, give it a bit of pause. I can bit of pause, 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 bit of pause. Over to the link. Principle, a leader, like a head teacher, and principle, a rule or value. Pal finishes off the word principle, and the P-L-E of please is at the end of the word principle. Don't call the principal of the school pal and always say please when asking them for something as a matter of principle. Hey pal, can I have the afternoon off? Excuse me? Please may I have the afternoon off, sir? That's better. And the answer is no. There you go. Another one could be the L at the end, L for leader, E at the end, E for ethic. Can be anything. Think of your own. If you've got a good one, let me know. Okay, you may own a badge or a pencil, not a shout out, a shout out. Even send me a video. If you, if you thought of a good link, do a recording, send one in, and we'll play it if it's, if it's that good. If it uh, deserves it, for sure. So that's uh, there end of uh, today's lesson about homophones. There are many, many more uh, on the app, which is free to download during lockdown. Go to the uh, go to the website, salinkalot.org. It's where you go for the uh, to get the free access. Um, I'll get the code to get free access to the site. On the app, there are lots of bundles of words, level one to level five, from uh, uh, quite small words to big words. And there's also, there's three bundles of homophones. There are 30 animations that have homophones, two words in each, if not some are slightly more. So there's loads of homophones there. There's rules and patterns, good bundles there, punctuation and grammar. And of course, Lady Lexicographer, AKA Lady Lex, the stories behind words. And she's gonna be on uh, it's going to be in the next lesson, lesson eight. So I look forward to having a chat with Lady Lex then. So we'll finish off with the name of the app is Salinkalot. Is it in? You know it.